Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is part two of the introduction to encapsulation. I'm going to go and open up my website here to javacjava.com Click on the Begin button. I'm going to scroll down to Encapsulation Part 2. So, In Part 1, I introduced the concept of setter and getter methods. These methods are known as mutator and accessor methods. Also in Part 1, I left you hanging on how we can prevent dir the direct usage of our instance variables. We can control the access to our instance variables using access modifiers. The topic is, of access modifiers is quite extensive and there are many rules that are way beyond the scope of this tutorial. But I will be covering them in detail in future tutorials. So for now, I will introduce you to the access modifier private and how it affects instance variables specifically. The access modifier private must be placed before the type when declaring an instance variable. Uh, it works like this. You've got your access modifier, then your type or data type and then your instance variable, and then you could go ahead and initialize it, you know, and assign it a value, but we'll just go ahead and put the semicolon on there. So private, and then must be before the type, which is int in this case, and then width, the variable name. And then the semicolon to terminate the statement. When we mark a variable as private, only the members inside of the class body, in other words, the area between the braces, have access to it. At that point, a reference variable can no longer access the variable directly using the dot operator. The only way to set and get the value of the instance variable is via the setter and getter methods. We have created a sort of capsule to protect the instance variable from direct manipulation that can produce unexpected results, hence the term encapsulation. Now remember, a reference variable here, just to go over this real quick, a reference variable is a variable that refers to an object of the type of class that we're, that we're um, defining here, right? And so the instance variable is inside of that object and it'll no longer be accessible via the reference variable. Like for example, if we did box b equals new box, you can't say b dot instance variable equals a value anymore, right? b being the reference variable and then dot being the operator that would typically call a um, an instance variable if it's not marked private. Okay, let's go ahead and um, get down to the good stuff here. Let's highlight this code here for the box class. Hit Control C to copy or right click and select copy. Let's move the browser off screen here and let's go down to start, search, type in CMD. If you're running Windows 7 or earlier, um, you can go ahead and uh, type in start run and then CMD to pull up the command prompt. We're going to go ahead and type in Java C and then press enter. And basically all this stuff will scroll by if it doesn't and you just get an error message. Go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. Make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing on. We'll type in CLS, which is clear screen. Then we'll type in CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory. Backslash tells it to go to the root. Type in MD, which is make directory Java. I already have it, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. We'll go ahead and change directories to that. And then we'll make a new directory called uh, encapsulation2. And notepad box.java first for our box class. Let's go ahead and save this. Okay. Now, the only difference between the part one and the part two here is um, I've created a few more getter methods and uh, which are basically accessor methods, right? And um, I've added the private keyword here, the access modifier to these instance variables here. So now, uh, private access modifier must, become bef must come before the data type. I went over that before. Now, only methods in the box class can access the scope of these variables. If you remember on my tutorial on scope, that'll make a little bit of sense, right? Because these are outside of the body of each one of these methods, so it can access, so it can access these. So that kind of reiterates the concept of variable scope there. Now, 
uh, private instance variables cannot be accessed directly outside of the class, okay? Now let's go ahead and we'll just go over, you know, set length, get length, set height, get height. Um, same stuff as in part one of the tutorials there. Where the setter methods, which are also known as mutator methods, mutator because they change the data, right? Um, as you can see, this is, for example, a length is initialized to zero. So the set length method will change its value or mutate it. I don't, I'm not a particularly big fan of the term mutator. It sounds like, I don't know, some sort of sci-fi monster crap to me. But anyway, that's, that's the difference between that. And then the accessor method, or in other words, the getter methods, right? They don't mutate it anyway. They just return it. They just return the value. So you're just accessing the value of that. So that's, that's the difference between the technical difference between the two. You'll hear getter, setter methods, accessor, mutator methods throughout, um, you know, throughout your career doing Java stuff there. So, but uh, that way you kind of know know what each one is and which one refers to what, and so on and so forth there. And then of course we just got our ordinary, plain old method here, calculate volume. That'll just return this calculation of the volume for length length times height times width and of course it has access to all of these um, instance variables that are now private too as well so let's go ahead and save this and let's compile it okay there's our box.class which is our java bytecode the compiled uh, version of our box source code box.java and let's come back here let's do notepad Encapsulation 2.java. Okay, encapsulation 2.java is going to be our source code file with our main method entry point in here, so we have actually something that can run. Yes, pull back over our website here. Scroll down to this code here for the encapsulation 2 class. We'll right click on that, select copy, or hit control C, right? Come over here, we'll paste that in there. Take out that empty line there. Let's save this. Okay, so encapsulation two is our class declaration. Here's everything that's inside of our class body there. Public static void main, right? There is our main method entry point with that method body there. We're still doing the same thing. Uh, box B equals new box. So we're creating a reference variable here, right? Um, of box type, and we're assigning a new box object to it. So now, since we did private int length over there in the box class, right, we can no longer set the value of the instance variable directly using the reference variable here. Remember, this is a reference variable. This, this is an instance variable. But since it's now marked private, we can no longer access it. And I'll tell you what, what I'll do is I'll just uncomment this. We'll compile this real quick here. Um, so basically we get this error, length has private access in box, right? So it won't even let us compile this, so no way we can actually run that. So basically that's what you get right there. The compiler says, oh, length is private. You can't, you can't access it. I'm not even going to continue on, right? So, okay, so that kind of shows you what happens there. So we can no longer access that. So now anyone who uses our class, right, if you're part of a big programming team or something like that, uh, the other programmers won't be able to directly access those instance variables. They can only access them using the setter and getter methods here. Okay, So now, um, if you remember from part one of my tutorial, we're checking to make sure that these the height parameter, all the parameters are valid values. In other words, we want them to be one or more uh, zero or negative values. We don't want that to work out because you know, when we calculate the volume of our box, it's just not going to return you know, good values there from part one. So anyway, um, pop back over to this one here. So we're just doing if um, a reference variable B in the dot operator invokes the set length method, and we have an argument of 10 here being passed in as a parameter into the um, set length class over in the box, or set length method over in the box class, right? So we're checking if each one of these returns true, right? 
And if they don't, it'll go ahead and just display unexpected value in one of the dimension arguments. Display that string literal there. So we're going to try to set the height equal to negative 2, right? And let's go ahead and run this. Or compile it and run it. Strip that dot class off there. So unexpected value in one of the dimension arguments. We got exactly what we failed at, what we wanted. The set height method would have returned false here because we passed in negative two, right? So it said if height param is greater than equal to one, we'd go ahead and set the height, the private height variable in here equal to the parameter, right? Oh, and return true. Now, since it's not, we just return back false. So we weren't able to set that properly there. Okay. So that caused this to go ahead and display that right there. So let's go ahead and fix this and set it to a positive value of greater than or equal to one. And we'll save this, pop back to the DOS prompt. And then we get the length of our box is 10, the height of our box is two, the width of our box is five, the volume of our box is 100. So back here to the class there, right? So obviously all these return true. We were able to set all of these, uh, the length, the width, and the height. And now we're using the, get, the getter methods right here to just simply display the length, the height, and the width, right? And those, those, those um, methods over here just simply, you know, return length. Because we have length um, private now. So we can no longer do something like, for example, if we tried to access that instance variable directly here, right? Um, by doing this, right? We're gonna get an error message here if we try that now because of the private access modifier. Okay, error. Length has private access in box. So we can no longer access that there. So I just wanted to drive that point home. Not only can we not set it, we can't even read it, you know? It's not like, uh, ooh, it's that read-only access on a file or something. You know, I can read it, but I can't change it. So by setting private, you can no longer access it in any way through your reference variable, right? And so basically, it's completely encapsulated, completely protected at that point. So go ahead and remove this here, put this back to the way it was. We'll clear our screen, recompile it, rerun it. Okay. All right, so we are using the getter methods, which are also known as the accessor methods, right? Because they're just accessing that variable's value. They're not, they're not changing it, right? Um, the setters are known as mutators because they're actually setting um, and changing the value of the, of the variable there. So, and then of course we just get the, um, the volume of our box by invoking the calculate volume method there. Okay, so let's go ahead and close out of this, close out of that, and close out of this. Just gonna leave you with some final thoughts here, and I'm gonna bring the final thoughts over here for this. Um, so there are three key principles of object-oriented programming, encapsulation, polymorphism, and inheritance. Now don't worry about polymorphism and inheritance yet. I will explain those concepts in future tutorials. When an instance variable is declared private, it cannot be accessed outside of the class, therefore it is protected within a capsule inside the class. Encapsulation is the principle of restricting access to the variables, or fields as Oracle would prefer me call them, using setter and getter methods. So, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.